It's homeowners <laughs> and potential buyers have been left feeling completely powerless after lenders withdrew mortgage deals at the fastest rate on record in response to that mini budget. Well, thankfully, expert help is at hand. Mortgage broker Sarah Tucker is joining us now to answer your questions. Good morning. It's lovely Good to morning. have you here today. And you said, it, actually, the last week has been extraordinary. You've never seen so many lenders pull, pull out. Like no, um, in such a quick space of time, that's yeah. the biggest thing. Um, and so it's just created panic. Absolute fear. So why did that happen? The reason that happened is complex, but basically the market reacted really badly to the mini budget. Swap rates increased at a rate that we so quickly we haven't seen it increase that quickly in two days. And the mortgage lenders essentially um, pulled out to reprice deals. What that meant for others is they were panicking because we mm. obviously for other people, when mortgage lenders pull out, mm. you're thinking this is bad, you know, yeah. people aren't lending. But the reality was mortgage lenders needed to to reevaluate what was quickly happening in the market and the market response was very negative to the And has that, has that improved now that there have been uh, there's been this U-turn mm -hmm. um, steadied the markets a wee bit and yes. does that mean that uh, there was an overreaction there was a bit of hysteria that it has calmed down in the long term a little bit We have seen mortgage lenders coming back on the market the rates have gone up though and quite dramatically with some lenders so yeah. Not necessarily an overreaction, um, but certainly people have got their heads around it quite quickly. Mm. That's what the mortgage market's good at. It's very resilient um, and it does move quickly. We have to. Well, let's get some um, help because yes. Claire's on the line now. Hi, Claire. Hello. Hello. Hi. Lovely to talk to you. So what's your situation at the moment? Because you've got a five-year fix that ends in February, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, at the same time, I also have my equity-free helped by loan finishing at the same time as well. Mm -hmm. So both are coming at a terrible time, really. Um, you want to know whether you should remortgage for the 20% value of your house on top? Yes. Yeah, so um, obviously it's difficult financially anyway. So ideally, or I think ideally, but, um, the best solution would be to try and remortgage with the 20% value of the house on top so we get rid of the the help to buy loan mm. um, but just really is that the best option is it sensible to do that at the moment with obviously everything all, all the interest rates and everything just going up and up mm. okay I think the biggest thing is if you can afford to do it then great um, because we would always say to people on a help to buy loan pay it off as quickly as you can because then you of course own the whole property um, in this scenario, because the interest rates are high, I realise it's not the best time. Um, but equally, if you can afford it and you've looked at all your options, um, it may well be worth doing still. I would have a look at what it looks like to keep the help to buy loan, just because the interest rate in year six is a lot lower um, than what you'll get on the market at the moment. But it does go up in year seven and continues to from there. So um, definitely weigh up all your options. But if you can afford it, still stick to your original plan. Okay. All right. Thank there you, you go, Claire. Thank helps, you for Claire. calling. Um, realistically, we, have, we talk to Martin Lewis, and Martin says so often, which you've never heard him say before, I throw my hands up, I don't I know. That, realistically, yeah. how much wriggle room is there? Um, there's things you can do. I think when people are in a fear response, which a lot of the country are, understandably so, we tend to think in black and white terms. It's how we're wired. But there's lots of things in the middle of the black and white. It's not as simple as I can't afford it and I'm going to lose my home. Um, you can, for example, these aren't traditional things we would say, but we would... We could look at extending your term and trying to lower mm -hmm. that monthly payment and spreading it over a longer period. You can actually get mortgages at a much later age now. Or potentially people could release some equity to really um, help with the burden of the rise in interest costs, the rising energy prices. Um, you can look at interest only. Again, it's not traditional. We wouldn't normally say... Let's look at interest yeah. only. But this is not normal time. It's not normal time. And we have to try and help. What about Maxine? She says, my mortgage has risen from around £849 to £1,149, which yeah. is pushing me to the limit with such ridiculously high rates. Will rates continue to increase even more? Or is there any way I can appeal to my mortgage company? I wish you could appeal to your mortgage company, but no, um, you can't. Otherwise, I think that'd be our full-time job at the moment. Um, as I just said, there are... Explore the ways to reduce it would be my message to Maxine. And certainly, if you're not looking at a fixed rate, fix it, because then if interest rates do increase, you've got your fixed rate there. Yeah. Um, but definitely, if she's going to struggle, the biggest thing is keep your mortgage payments up. So explore ways with an expert as to how you can reduce it for the next two to five years, mm. just to get you through. Um, and is that period. how long we're in? this for? 
I think so. Two I mean, to five years. experts are saying the interest rates could settle in, in as little as two years. Um, back to normal, normal times. We can't compare them to what we in the industry call COVID cheap rates. Mm. They, are, they were historically low and, and we shouldn't ever expect them to really go to that level. Um, so, yeah, settling means not one or two percent, certainly, but it does mean a bit less than what we're mm. seeing at the moment. Okay. Um, Wendy said, what is happening with the government's help to buy mortgage scheme after the five-year interest-free period expires? Are they going to help buyers by extending the interest-free period? Well, I think, as we've seen, things can happen very quickly with the government decisions. Um, they normally happen when the expiry date's coming to an end, which is the 31st of October this year. You must complete by the end of March next year. So I guess watch this space. Um, there are other schemes being looked at to replace it, um, but certainly it does look like at the moment it is going to end. Jenny says, uh, I've recently been offered a mortgage, but I'm now living in fear that it will be retracted. Is there a big chance that this can happen to me? It's a very low chance that it will happen. We haven't seen it yet. In past years, lots of years ago, that sort of thing was happening. I think that's people's biggest fear. But if you've got a mortgage offer, you generally are in a good position. You should be able to keep that fixed rate until you complete. Um, and uh, I think we can just get Katie's in. Is it wise to leave my fixed rate early? I think it might be my only option, but I'm also concerned about increasing payments. Should I remortgage early and fix a new rate? It's really dependent on what that looks like. Her early repayment charge could be quite hefty, and if she's got a really good rate, it might be worth keeping it for a bit longer um, and enjoying that rate. So I'd look at both scenarios with her, look at how much it's going to cost her. There's always an exit fee to exit a fixed rate early. So she's going to have to look at that properly mm. um, and really understand it. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.